Our whole topic so far has been about counting the number of ways of getting things. And we've been using permutations and combinations and factorials and those kinds of things to do that. Um, this section, as I explained to you last lesson, is a little bit different. Okay, um, I guess it's included in there because in, in this topic because we're still trying to count the number of ways of doing things, but it's not by placing things in order or putting groups together. It's a it's a little bit a little bit different this one. So I guess this section is a lot about logic. Can you think through the problem and logically think through how many ways something is going to occur? And so this one is called the pigeonhole principle. And I guess the example there on the top of the page is possibly why it got its name. So it said, if five pigeons fly into four pigeonholes, and now think about a good old fashioned um, bird cage, if you like. So you've got, here's my bird cage. And I'm going to have one, two, three, four pigeonholes that my birds can get into their cage, right? Maybe it's back when, no, they were doves, weren't they? The message of birds. No, they were pigeons. Message of pigeons. They were pigeons. Okay. So I have five pigeons and I only have four holes for them to choose to go through. At least one hole would have to have two pigeons that go through it, right? Okay. I mean, the first four pigeons that come there, technically, they could each choose a different hole, right? Look at one, two, three, four, they could choose one hole each. But the fifth pigeon is going to have to follow one of the other pigeons. It can't have its own hole to go through. Okay? So it says that it's easy to see why. Otherwise, each hole has at most one pigeon and the total number of pigeons couldn't be more than four. So to further that, if we have 16 pigeons to occupy five pigeon holes, at least one hole must contain how many? Oh, yes. Good job, you two. Well done. How did you... They were holding up the answer. How did you come up with that answer for everybody else who didn't get that answer? So over here, if I've got five pigeonholes now, you can think 15 pigeons. If I had 15 pigeons, because that goes nicely into five, that would be three pigeons going into each hole. If they were spreading themselves out nicely and orderly going into those pigeonholes, I can get three into each hole. But as soon as I have that 16th pigeon, it's going to have to be, there's going to be one hole that has to have four pigeons going into it. Yes? So the answer there is actually a four. Now, to try and give you some kind of rule to work with, okay, it's not really a rules kind of section, about logical thinking, but that next part below is to try and give you some kind of rule to work with. More generally, if you have n pigeons and k holes, so if I have, if n is the total number of people that I'm trying to divide up and I'm trying to put them into k groups, then all we need to do is go n divided by k. So for this 16 pigeon example, if I go 16 divided by 5, because I had 5 pigeon holes, it gives me 3.2. That means that three, each hole would have to have three pigeons going into it, but that 0.2, as soon as you have that decimal place there, it means that there's one, at least one pigeon that's going to have to go into, um, to make a fourth into one of those holes. Yeah? So you always round up. Always round up. So therefore, at least one hole must have four pigeons, okay? So that's the only little formula that we're going to be working with. There's just a couple of examples here for us to look at. How many cards must be selected from a standard pack of 52 playing cards to make sure that you have two cards of the same suit? Okay, we can't use our little rule for this. We kind of have this backwards a little bit. If in our standard pack of cards, there's four different suits, right? Hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. So theoretically, I could pick one of each of those suits different. I could randomly pick out four cards, and if I was really lucky, I might get all four different suits, right? So it is possible to select four cards 
and get four different suits. However, as soon as I pick one more card than that, I'm going to have to have a double up, right? Okay, so that means altogether, if I pick five cards, that would ensure that I would definitely have to have two of the same suit. Now, I might have only had to have picked two cards to get the same suit, but the question is saying, without a doubt, uh, sorry, I'm on what? Oh, the canning jokers, don't be difficult. Okay, um, this is to make sure without a doubt you are guaranteed in five cards you would have to have two that are the same suit. Okay, question two is similar. Let's try this one. There are three pairs of socks in a drawer, coloured brown, grey and black. They are not paired up. I'm sure you all pair your socks. How many socks must be selected from the drawer? You're not looking, you're randomly selecting, to make sure that you will have a pair of socks the same colour. So very similar to the last question, if I have three pairs of socks in that drawer, I could pick three socks out and they could be all different colours, right? Okay, but as soon as I pick out that fourth sock, as soon as I pick out one more, I know that I would have to have a pair in my hand. Okay, so that means four. Pick it for the minimum number of sock socks to make sure that I have a pair would be four socks. Yep. Oh, you're telling me the answer for the next one? Oh, oh wait, wait a second. Question three. There are 400 students attending a senior college. Explain, and that's why we love explain questions. Explain why at least two of them will celebrate their birthday on the same day. Now, this one we can use that little N over K formula to help us show that, okay? Our 400 is our total number of students that we have. How many possible birth dates are there? 366. It doesn't happen every year, but there is 366 different birth dates that you could have. Being a bit technical there, but yes, the leap year, 29th of Feb, could be a birthday as well. If you divide those two numbers, you get 1.09, okay? So yes, yeah, so like I said before, as soon as I have that decimal place, it means that I round up, which means that there must be at least two people, and it makes sense. You, know, you could have 366 people, it'd be really unlikely to have 366 people where everyone had a different birth date, but as soon as you go above 366 people, you know without a doubt that you're going to have to have at least two people sharing a birth date. Possibly more, quite probably more, but at least two that are sharing the same birthday. Okay, so you just do that little sum and then you write a little therefore, because it did say explain, therefore as there are more than 366 students, at least two of them, have their birthday on the same day. Okay, so you just had to be able to show that and explain that in some way. And number four. A group of 74 people in a singing contest are placed into different audition rooms according to their category, male, female, children and groups. Probably better to think of this as not 74 people because the, uh, it would be 74 items, okay, because the groups, you wouldn't be counting all the different people in the group. Does that make sense? So let's say there is 74 items in this contest. If there are at least X people in one of the rooms, find the value of X. So thinking about dividing them up, I've got four categories there, don't I? So I could do 74 was my total number of groups, my items. If I divide that by four, then that means that I could put 18 people, if I, if I was dividing them out evenly, I would get 18 people in each one, or group, sorry, in each one of those rooms. 
However, it doesn't go 18 exactly, it's 18.5. That means that at least one of those rooms would have to have 19. What? Is it through 80s and 290s? Possibly. Or it actually could be like 17, 17, 19, 20. But we're just saying at least one of them has to have 19. Yeah. So therefore, there will be at least 19 in one of the rooms. And I probably should say that means that x is equal to 19. Because it's mentioned x. If there are at least x people in one of the rooms. So x equals 19. That's it. That's the pigeonhole principle.